What would you do if you were a gamer and the world ended? Imagine this, a bright sunny day, birds chirping, the perfect setting for a gaming marathon. Suddenly the sky darkens, a deafening boom resonates and the world as you know it crumbles. You're a hardcore Fallout and zombie apocalypse gamer, so the irony isn't lost on you. As the dust settles, you emerge from the wreckage, your home in ruins. But amidst the chaos, a glimmer of hope, you've managed to save your computer and gaming equipment. You feel the weight of the world on your shoulders, but that's nothing compared to the weight of your gaming rig. Despite the apocalypse, your gamer instinct kicks in. The world might be in shambles, but hey, you've got levels to complete, zombies to slay. So there I was, amidst the apocalypse, clutching onto my computer and gaming equipment like a newborn. As the dust settled, the reality of my predicament started sinking in. No electricity, no internet, and a house that looked like a scene from my favorite post-apocalyptic game. You see, in the world of gaming, I was a hero, a warrior. The one who could single-handedly stave off a zombie apocalypse or save humanity from a nuclear disaster. But now, in this cruel twist of fate, I was just an average Joe, with a house that looked like it had been hit by a pixelated bomb in Minecraft, and a gaming rig that was as useful as a paperweight. I mean, let's face it, what use is an Alienware Area 51 Threadripper without electricity, or a top-tier graphics card without a functioning monitor? It's like having a Ferrari with no gas, or a VR headset with no games. It's a tragedy of Shakespearean proportions, but with less iambic pentameter and more RGB lighting. And then there was the internet. Oh, the sweet, sweet internet. The digital Eden where I would slay dragons, conquer galaxies, and occasionally argue with 12-year-olds about the merits of console gaming versus PC. But without it, I was like a ship without a compass, a hero without a quest, a gamer without a game. But you know what they say, right? When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade, or, in my case, when life gives you a nuclear apocalypse, you start thinking of ways to game offline. I mean, who needs the internet when you have a hard drive full of single-player games, right, right? So, there I was, amidst the debris of my shattered life, with a gaming PC that was about as useful as a chocolate teapot, and an internet connection that was as reliable as a politician's promise. But I was a gamer, a survivor, the one who could turn the tables on fate and find a way to keep gaming. Because in the end, that's what we gamers do. We adapt, we survive, we game. Well, who'd have thought that my gaming sessions would turn into a real-life survival tutorial? But remember, a gamer's got a game, even when the world seems to have hit the reset button. So, there I was, in the middle of a nuclear winter with nothing but my wits and a gaming rig that had seen better days. But hey, if I could survive a Deathclaw attack in Fallout, I could make this work. I started by taking apart my old solar garden lights. Who knew those hours spent disassembling virtual machinery in games would come in handy for reverse engineering solar panels? Then, I rigged up a makeshift battery from an old car battery. All those hours in The Walking Dead, avoiding zombies, and scavenging for resources taught me a thing or two about improvisation. It wasn't easy. There were moments when I thought I might be better off trying to tame a rad roach, but at the end of the day, it was all worth it. In the face of apocalypse, I learned that my gaming skills were not just for entertainment, but possibly the key to my survival. So here I am in this post-apocalyptic world where gaming has taken a whole new meaning. My daily grind is no longer about leveling up and fallout. It's about finding food, water, and shelter. But hey, I've been training for this in every zombie apocalypse game I've ever played. The real world has become my new gaming platform. The strategies I've honed over countless hours of gameplay now serve as my survival guide. Stealth and resource management, once tactics for virtual survival, are now key to my real-life existence. My quests have changed too. Fetching ammo in a game, piece of cake, fetching water from a radioactive lake. Now, that's a challenge, but I'm adapting, learning, growing. And in a twisted way, it's kind of fun. Who knew all those hours in front of a screen would prepare me for this? So even in a post-apocalyptic world, a gamer's got a game. After all, it's not just about survival. It's about keeping that high score, right?